Lav mics have got absolutely nothing to do with this channel. I don't specialize in videography, although I do do it outside of the platform. Uh, my content is guitar related, so it might be a reasonable question to ask why am I doing a video on lav mics? Well, firstly, because I wanted them, and uh, secondly, because they are made by a company that specializes in guitar effects, and I've actually uh, demoed a few of their products on this channel before. Uh, so this video is going to be about two subjects. Firstly, it's about these lav mics, and if you're only interested in the details for this, please skip ahead using the timestamps below. And secondly, it's about my home recording setup for those people who are regular viewers of the channel and are interested. The advantage of using lav mics is that I can stand basically anywhere in relation to the camera. That's actually going to prove really useful at home, where I have the echoiest room in the world, um, and I'll be able to film some things that I haven't been able to, including my home setup. As you can see, I'm getting further away from you, um, I have no idea how far this is, probably about 100 yards or so, I would think. I don't know what the range is like on these. I'll find out whether um, I'm just basically stood in a field of sheep and you can't hear a word I'm saying. If you can still hear me, I would be absolutely amazed, and this is further than you would ever need for a lav mic. Um, I can't wait to see whether this is recorded. I'm going to jog back to the camera now before someone nicks it. My right away, boys, let's shift out. <laughs> Hi there guys, hopefully this looks like something. The light is going to change quite badly because I'm in front of an open window. I would normally film in the darkness. I would uh, close these blackout curtains. Um, the Wi-Fi has dropped out yet again. Hopefully this is still filming, otherwise this will be pointless. This is my main camera setup over here. This is a Sony a6300 with a Feel World F6 Plus monitor on the top and a cheap DCDN lens. So that's what you see on the channel. This is my secondary camera. This is a Panasonic LX100, uh, which I have uh, tethered by Wi-Fi to my phone right now so I can see what I'm filming. Both of these uh, cameras don't have a flip screen, so I have to have some kind of external monitoring device. Uh, this is my main light. This is a Godox SL60W. It's a daylight balance light. It's got the grid on it so I can direct the light. And this one over here, which you can't see, would normally be the kicker. And this one is a bicolor light that I can uh, alter to either tungsten or daylight. It's daylight right now, obviously. And this is a, a what is it? A Pixar Pro Leco 300B, I believe. Uh, catchy little name. Anyway, this is my uh, recording setup. Uh, so this is a relatively recent acquisition. This is the Marshall SV20H. And I've also got my uh, DV Mark GH250, which was the amp that I used for uh, the first few years on this channel. And I'm still using it for clean. I do like that. Like I said, the light is going to change horrifically. You'll have to forgive that. So the way I've got this configured here, both of these amps are running into the Bagheera Power Soak. Now, I'm not recording off the Bagheera Power Soak. You're not hearing that. I'm hearing it. Both of these amps feature uh, an out. So this one's got a DI out, and this one has got a preamp out. The DI out technically is cab module... Uh, uh, cab modeling in and of itself, but I'm running it into an IR loader, and I'm actually running it into a Sonicake IR loader. Um, I've had quite a few Sonicake products on this channel, um, including, of course, these, uh, these lav mics, uh, and there's only two that I've kept. The rest have been eBayed. I've been using these for about six months, and I think they're excellent. Um, hopefully, the sound is going to be uh, good in this video because I'm, I'm leaning forward, so sometimes I'm talking more into the mic. So uh, again, you'll have to forgive that. Uh, but the other one is the Sonic 8 IR loader. I think it's really excellent. It's only about 30 quid and uh, it, it does a fantastic job. So that is what you hear on the channel all the time and, and, and has been ever since I did the video for that, uh, that product. But both of these amps have a strange uh, feature here in that the, the DI out or the preamp out are post master volume which means that I need to turn these amps up to basically gig volume, and I'm talking like five-piece rock band volume, in order that I have enough signal present at the preamp out or that I have enough drive on the Marshall. What that means is it would be absolutely ear-splitting in here, and I live in a block of flats, so that just would, uh, would be a non-starter. So I'm using the Bagheera as a way to just mute the signal going into the speaker. However, 
when this is all the way down on the attenuation volume here, you still have some amount of leakage out of this cab, which is what I'm using for monitoring. Now this also came with a, a sort of an unforeseen benefit when using the DV Mark in that the effects loop was not recorded out of the preamp out, the preamp out being before it gets the effects loop. What that meant was that I could put a delay in the DV Mark's effects loop and not record it. So I can hear it in the room as I'm playing, but I don't have to commit to it on a recording. I don't have that now. I, uh, I have to use some kind of a VST plugin for the Marshall. Um, so you've, you've got a, a delay running on that, which would be coming out of the mixing speakers. And then the dry signal would be coming out of the one under the desk and uh, vice versa for the DV Mark. The dry signal would be, uh, would be coming out of the mixing speakers and the delay would be coming out of the one under the desk, which is quite handy. So it means I get something nice to play on, uh, but I don't have to commit to that sound uh, once I've recorded it. The mixing speakers, by the way, are really inexpensive. They were a recommendation from a friend to my parents that, uh, that they bought it me for a Christmas present um, probably about 15 years ago. Uh, these are uh, Behringer MS40s. Now you could buy much, much better quality speakers, but I like the way these sound for guitar. I've tried a number of other speakers, but for me, they always sound really fizzy. These are completely smooth. They're probably not the best mixing speakers out there. They're not the most accurate representation of what you're hearing, but they're also quite nice for just listening to YouTube or whatever it is you're listening to. Uh, sometimes with mixing speakers, they're quite fatiguing because they're, they're so articulate and they're so harsh. They also tend to have a whole heap of 2.7K, which is the fizz factor in guitar. These don't have that, they're really smooth. So it may force me to mix in a strange way, uh, but you've got to figure that you're only mixing relative to anything else. If I have another song for reference, then it's it's just uh, directly you know relative to that song that I'm mixing. Uh, it's not like you're hearing one thing on one device and something on another. So uh, although they're inexpensive, I do like them and I would recommend them for a guitarist that wants to just jam through the speakers at home because they sound really smooth and they're dirt cheap now. I mean, used you probably pick these up for sixty quid. I'm running Cubase Artist Six Student Edition from twenty ten. That same friend, uh, if you're watching, thanks, Mike. Uh, bought me that uh, because he had a, a student card. Shh, don't tell anyone. I've basically run with stock plugins ever since. I do have the Red 1 and 2 uh, EQ and compressor that ship with the Focusrite, and I've used that for obviously all of that time. I've had that for about 10 years as well. So my, my interface, this Focusrite 8920, you don't need anything that complicated. The reason I have something that big is that I had originally planned to maybe record some live bands. This is in an era before all bands decided that they were going to get a digital desk, and of course they could just run sound off that now. Um, so in the event, I never went out and recorded a live band. I thought it was just too much of a pain. Uh, but that was why I bought such a large interface. But it's come up with a really useful benefit in that I can leave everything plugged in. So my guitar uh, is running it's not stereo, it's an XLR and a jack, and uh, they're running into two separate channels on the back of the focus, right? And I can leave those levels set exactly where they are, which means I can very easily recall a sound from six months ago on, on a project. Because it's an impulse response, not a mic on a cab, it's the exact same sound. So all you have to do is just dial the amp in the same, and there you are, you can drop in on a track and redo something if you wanted to expand that jam. So that's quite a, a quite handy feature. Uh, that's pretty much the setup. It's uh, it's relatively simplistic, but with a couple of uh, you know unforeseen benefits. Basically, all of the drive sounds on the channel right now are the Marshall, and the clean sounds are the DV Mark with uh, this EP booster going into the front end of it. And I find that gives me quite a nice fendery sort of sound. The lav mics come in this hard zip case. It has two padded compartments for the two units and a handy place to keep accessories, including this dead dwarf hamster and a USB that allows for simultaneous charging of both the receiver and the transmitter. On the top are controls for low cut, mute and input sensitivity, and on the rear you'll find a sprung clip that is also the perfect size to fit into a hot shoe or a cold shoe or any kind of temperature shoe that you like that will allow you to easily attach it to your camera. In terms of overall output volume, the middle setting on a receiver unit is about comparable to my Rode Video Micro, which is a passive mic. 
Now I am putting a slight 300 hertz cut in post, and without that it sounds exactly like this, which is a little bit more muffled. I am recording full range, I'm not using the bass cut on the receiver unit. I prefer to take it out in the program afterwards and basically record the full spectrum. I have just recently, by the way, changed, although you won't have heard it yet, my, my videos go out four months after I film them, um, but I have recently bought some software, um, Ozone 11, is the, uh, is the stuff I'm now using for mastering because uh, I, I was talking about the software. So I have expanded that a little bit and I've also um, reacquired uh, Easy Drummer. For years I had Easy Drummer but mine uh, stopped working. Um, <laughs> shh, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when that stopped working that was really impractical. So I'm going to do a video about how I was building a track and how I'm doing it now because let me tell you the workflow is so much easier now. I've been making a total meal of it using uh, various sample software over the last couple of years. So going back to Easy Drummer and particularly Easy Drummer 3, so much easier and, uh, and the Ozone 11 stuff is going to make the mastering infinitely better. I, I don't doubt that you could do it better than an AI mastering thing like that, but at the same time, only if you have the talent and also the plugins, and I have neither. So Ozone does it better than I can do it, so it's going to be a vast improvement to the sound on the channel. Anyway, this has been an enormously long video with a hell of a lot of jibber jabber, but there's really no other way to do it. Um, if you've managed to sit through any of it, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you to Sonic Ake for sending these things over. They're excellent. I'm going to continue using them on the channel. I do think it's improved the audio quality a lot, and I'll see you in a future video. Later.